Section 2.1, the rectangular coordinate systems and graphs. To begin with, we have a definition of what a, the Cartesian coordinate system is. It is a grid system having perpendicular axes. So we assume that these two are drawn at a 90 degree angle. Usually that is not written. The center of the plane, the origin, is the point at which the two axes cross. Okay, that is the coordinate 0, 0. Let's go ahead and label that origin. Each point in the plane is identified by its x-coordinate, or horizontal displacement, and its y-coordinate, the vertical displacement from the origin. And we'll write that as an ordered pair x, comma, y, which indicates where in this grid we lie, and that is how far we are displaced from the origin. So let's go ahead and plot the points negative 2, 4, and let's first draw this right here. All right, so negative 2, 4. This means my x-displacement is negative 2, meaning I am to the left 2 from the origin, and then my y displacement is 4, which means I am displaced 4 up, so left 2 and up 4, and that is the point negative 2, 4. The point 3, 3 would be a horizontal displacement 3 to the right, and a vertical displacement 3 up, so 3, 3 is found there. Last, 0, negative 3. Well, that one would be 0 displacement going in the horizontal displacement, and 3 down. So if we do not go anywhere in the x direction, and 3 down, we'll be right here on the y-axis. Next, graph the equation y equals negative x plus 2 by plotting points. So I've actually already put together a table over here. This is actually from the textbook. If the x value is negative 5, then the y value, by evaluating this, is found to be 7. So negative 5, 7 is a coordinate on this graph. Likewise, negative 3, 5 is a coordinate on this graph. Negative 1, 3. 0, 2, 1, 1, 3, negative 1, and 5, negative 3. So let's plot those points. Negative 5, 7 would be 5 to the left and up 7. And that is just off this graph. Let's go ahead and say 7 is right there. Negative 3, 5. Negative 1, 3. 0, 2, 1, 1. 3, negative 1, and 5, negative 3. So it appears that all of the points, all the coordinate points that satisfy this equation, lie on this line. And so the graph of y equals negative x plus 2 could be given by that graph, which represents all of the infinite number of points that satisfy that equation that would lie on that line. All right, example three, use a graphing utility to graph the function negative two-thirds x minus four-thirds. So I'm not actually going to show you a graphing calculator, but that would entail us, if you were on a TI calculator, pressing y equals, typing in our equation, and pressing graph. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch what this should look like. So very, try using a calculator and then verify that here. So this would be just below negative 1, because that would be negative 1 and a third. Negative 2 over 3. So we'd have a slope going down 2 and over 3, which would be roughly there. So our line should look something like that. Roughly. Alright, example 4. Find the intercepts of the equation y equals negative 3x minus 4. Then sketch the graph using only the intercepts. To find the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. Set y equal to 0, and therefore we can solve for x. That would be the x-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we'll set x equal to 0, and then solve for y. So we set the opposite coordinate equal to 0. Because my x-intercept would be of the form 
something, comma, zero. We go left or right, but not have any vertical displacement. For the y-intercept, we would have no horizontal displacement and only vertical displacement. So let's go ahead and do that. For our x-intercept, we'll set y equal to zero, so that's zero equals negative three x minus four. Adding four to both sides, four equals negative three x, dividing by negative three, x equals negative four thirds. So if x is four thirds to the left, so we'll have that point there. Now for our y-intercept, we will set x equal to zero, so that would be y equals negative three x, zero minus four, and that should evaluate to be negative four. So placing that point, negative four, four displacement down, and our line should pass through both of those points. Now I happen to know that is a linear function, so I know it's going to be in the form of a line. Um, for other functions, we might need to be familiar with our parent functions to know what in general they're going to look like. All right, example five. Find the distance between the points negative three, negative one, and two, three. All right, well, let's look at this graph and this equation and see if we can make sense of distance. If you were looking at a graph, you have two points. The distance between the shortest distance is going to be given by this line right here. Well, if we were to draw out these two legs that are not automatically there, okay, if we sketched these, you notice they'd be at a right angle. One is the horizontal displacement, one is the vertical displacement and I'm going to write what this is. A is the one leg of that triangle, B is the second leg of that triangle, and that equals C. And if we were to use the Pythagorean identity, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, to solve for C, C would equal the square root of A squared plus B squared. Well, given that A is the horizontal displacement and B is the vertical displacement, this formula pretty much just falls out. It just makes sense based on the Pythagorean identity. So what we want to do is just evaluate into that formula the distance equals, I'm going to go ahead and label these, x1, y1, x2, y2. The distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1. So this would be two minus negative three squared plus y two, which is three, minus y one, which is negative one squared. And that would be the square root of five squared. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in parentheses, but we don't need it since it is positive there. Five squared plus four squared which is 25 and 16. All right. 41, square root of 41. Our distance is the square root of 41 between those two points. And that is the straight line distance, directly from one point to the other, that's the shortest distance you could have. All right, example six is gonna be slightly different says, Tracy set out from Elmhurst, Illinois to go to Franklin Park. Starting here, we're going to Franklin Park, which is over here at 8-7. Each stop is indicated by a red dot in this figure. Find the total distance traveled, and then compare this distance between her starting and her final positions. All right, well, the first distance that she travels is from 0, 0 to 1, 1 which means if we are going like, and this is actually called taxi cab geometry or taxi cab distance, the distance she actually travels is two. We're going by, by city blocks here. All right, so from zero, zero to one, one. 
she travels, she d is displaced horizontally one and vertically one. So the distance is two. This could be blocks, this could be miles, we don't have a scale on this graph, so that's all we can say. Now, from one one to five one, she is displaced four units horizontally and none vertically, so her distance there is four. Next, from five one to eight three, she is displaced three units horizontally and two units vertically, so we are going this way and this way. So that is three plus two, that is a distance of five, again in this sort of taxi cab way. Now from eight three to eight seven, she is not displaced horizontally any, but vertically displaced four. So our total distance there is two plus four plus five plus four which is 15. She has traveled a distance of 15. We do not have units, so we won't label it. Now, compare this with the distance between her starting and her final positions. For that, we're actually going to calculate using the formula we had. Distance equals, now our points are 0, 0, and 8, 7. So x1, y1, x2, y2, the square root of x2 minus x1, 8 minus 0, squared, plus our vertical displacement, so 7 minus 0 squared, and that would be the square root of 8 squared plus 7 squared, and again I'm dropping those parentheses because they are both perfect squares, or not because they're both positive, now these both will be perfect squares, so that would be 64 and 49, so this will be the square root of 113. Now the square root of 113 is actually 10.6, 10.63, it's approximately that. So the straight line distance from point A to point B here, 0, 0 to 8, 7, is much shorter. Now I add on to that fact that the shortest distance is going to be based on that Pythagorean identity, okay, the straight line distance, or you might have heard as the crow flies. Um, instead of going around blocks, you can just go straight point A to point B. Um, that is always going to be shorter than any other way that we can come up with. All right, let's look at example seven. Find the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints seven, negative two, and nine, five. So based on this graph we have over here, the midpoint, and in fact the bisector here of this line, or this line segment, is the average of the x values and then the average of the y values. So the way we are going to find this is our midpoint. Our midpoint is the point 7 plus 9 over 2, comma negative 2 plus 5 over 2. We'll average the x values, average the y values. And we'll go ahead and say that's equal to, this will be, that is 8, and that is 3 halves. 3 halves. So there is our midpoint of that line segment without drawing it. Now for the second one, example 8, the diameter of a circle has endpoints negative 1, negative 4, and 5, negative 4. Find the center of the circle. I want to sketch this one. So say that's negative 1 and we have down here negative 4, and we have 5, negative 4. This is a circle. I don't know the radius, but I could figure that out. My center is going to have to be in between those two endpoints, because it says the diameter has these endpoints. So the diameter would be the distance across, the radius would be half of that, but if we want to just find the center of the circle, what we're doing is finding the midpoint. All right, that is the midpoint between those two coordinates. All right, so our center, so our center is going to be equal to, let's make that larger, 
All right, average of our x values, so negative 1 plus 5 over 2, and negative 4 plus negative 4 over 2. All right, that would be 2 comma negative 4, which makes perfect sense because the diameter lies, the, if you notice, the y values are both negative 4. So, of course, the diameter is going to lie, or the center of the circle is going to lie on that same line. All right, that brings us to the end of this section about the rectangular coordinate system.